in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Stub Love 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Rock. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always and respect you. Peace, love, and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. And of course, I'm your host, Diane Ra. I'm going to I'm going to hide behind this picture today, okay? That's what I'm going to do like a whole lot of folks do. Got a whole lot to say. I'm going to stop making videos and just hide behind this picture right here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm your, I'm your, I'm your host, Brother Tommy Phoebe Rock. Let's get to it. Did you know? Contrary to popular belief that black people cannot be racist. And I know there are a lot of other folks out there that might disagree. And that's your, as Bobby Brown would say, that's your prerogative. That's your prerogative. But your prerogative doesn't mean it's necessarily true. Prior to the European coming into power, or this particular race of Caucasians being uh, a dominant influence and power in the world, to my knowledge, you can, you can teach me, okay? You can teach me. But to my knowledge, there was no such thing as racism. Racism is an after effect of what is called white supremacy, where the Caucasian people, knowing they were the actual minorities on the planet, created a system to make them or keep them in the in that dominant realm. Also to protect them from genetic annihilation because they knew if they mixed in with the darker people, mixing with darker people would cause them to go extinct. So with white supremacy, this helped them remain in power and protect their race from genetic annihilation. So when they decided to take black people and bring them into this country, the black man was not meant to become a citizen. He was meant to be an animal, a beast of burden. So a system was designed in order to keep him in that position based on Racial superiority, white supremacy. Racism comes from the practice of white supremacy. Your race being dominant over another. It 
is impossible for black people to be racist because in order to be a racist, you have to take advantage of the fact on your skin color. Because the world that's around you is born and made where it uplifts the light or the white or the Caucasian and it degrades and makes inferior those who are dark. So in this society, Caucasian people control the educational system of blacks, control the employment of blacks, control the economics of blacks. Black people don't make none of the laws. They are under total 100% domination of white people. Even till 2009, because these blacks don't even mind being under the domination of whites. They still carry their slave master's name from 300 years ago. They are still Johnson and Jackson and all these Caucasian names because they still have a connection to the slave master. White people don't carry African names. White people don't are not educated by black people. Their uh, society is not uh, controlled by the economics of black people. They are not held down or made inferior or judged biased against because of their race, because their race are the ones in control. Now, black people can dislike you. They can hate you if they wish they choose to do so. They can become an employer and fire you because of your race. But you see, you can get fired because of your race, but you're not dependent on black people to give you no job. Black people are dependent upon whites to give them jobs. They're dependent on whites to educate them, they are putting on this white government that is rooted in white supremacy for their well-being. So they cannot be racist because they have no control. They cannot do anything to you. But you can take advantage if you are Caucasian because this uh, society is rooted in uh, Caucasian supremacy, you can take advantage of your white skin and do things to darker people that he can't do to you because it is your people who are in control. It is funny to me that certain Caucasian people or, or white people, however you want to, or Europeans, however you want to call yourself, they're always trying to share evil and wicked things with others. Because uh, you are racist. You want to share, you want to try to make black people racist and wish that's something they cannot do. You want to share it with them. And you want to call black people murderers and drunkards and all these other different things when it's bad. When it's bad. You want to say that black people own slaves. They did. There were black people that owned slaves. And you want to say, well, some black people owned slaves, and they did. But they don't run this country. They didn't make the laws. You put them in that position to do that. Then this nation became rich off slavery. These black people didn't become world powers because they owned slaves, but you did. Now, you want to share the blame that some black people owned slaves, but you don't want to share the richness with them. You don't you don't want to share your power with them that you came from your slave owning days. And you still exploit people. People, not only black people, may not be slaves per se, but they are exploited. We know that we are underworked and underpaid and a certain class is that held up high. And if you're not part of that class, you are exploited. So a rich man can commit a murder, 
and a poor man can commit a murder, but because I got some money, my chances of not being punished is much greater. But as a poor person, or one who is biased against because I'm dark skinned, the chances of me seeing the seeing the death chamber, having a, a, a chemical put in my vein, suffering the death penalty, the sky, the chances of me being punished like that is much higher than a rich person. But the point I want to make again is that black people are, are in no position and don't fit the criteria to be racist because they don't have any power. And then racism will form and come from out of this creation of white supremacy in order for white people to maintain their domination of the world based on race as well as protect their race from genetic annihilation because if you mix with darker people, it will make your race become extinct. And that is what so many of those who know are trying to prevent. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. I may be wrong. If so, jot down your comments and uh, let's talk about it. Y'all have a nice day. And this was and is the realities temple on earth. Peace. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And once again, welcome to another edition of the, of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I'm your host, Talik Ibn Ra. Time flies when we're having fun, so let me get straight to the DC, <laughs> to the dozy, to the dozer. <laughs> oh, it's very hard for me to get here. Many of you know that I am a former member of the Nation of Islam. For those of you who do not know who the Nation of Islam is, is, but we associate the Nation of Islam with the great Malcolm X, perhaps you heard of him, and I am very sure some of you have heard of this organization of black people that called the white man the devil. I am a former member, and this goes back to the early 1980s. When I was a member of the Nation, Nation of Islam, we were or had allies with the Hebrew Israelite nation. And I believe at that time, the founder or one of the lead elders of the Hebrew Israelite nation was Yahweh ben Israel. And to my knowledge, that faction or division of the Hebrew Israelite nation, they actually moved to Israel. So I'm not um, familiar with their activities at this point, but I do know that those Hebrew Israelites were very nice brothers and sisters. They supported uh, the Nation of Islam, and the Nation of Islam supported them. We had very cordial relations. Um, it was wonderful. But now, in 2009, I am very shocked and very disappointed in those who call themselves Hebrew Israelites. I used to live in New York City, and uh, Hebrew Israelites were known to be out on the streets, not hollering and screaming at people, but peddling their words. They would sell these different uh, types of perfumes and other items that they thought that black people could use in their homes. But now, instead of a whole lot of peddling of words, trying to 
uh, be nice to black people so they can hear the word of God that's good for their salvation now on the streets of New York and now on the streets of Philadelphia and Detroit you have Hebrew Israelites who are on the corners dressed in some kind of manufactured ancient type people wardrobe some of them not even wearing shoes they wear sandals and it's 20 degrees below zero outside trying to mimic somebody they don't know nothing about calling and screaming at black people in fact these hebrew israelites some of them on the streets used to be proud of their pretty white outfits they're on the street they don't take any baths they stink harder than screaming to talk about how yahweh or whoever is going to come and save the black people disrespectful to women I don't understand the women in the Hebrew Israelite nation can stand being subservient to men calling them out of their names. And even here on YouTube, they will call you a nigger. How the hell are you going to call me a nigger, but yet still you talk about this God is for my salvation, and nigger is a word derived from the oppressor. So if you call me a nigger using the words of the oppressor, what that makes you. They talk all this thing about the Bible and God's salvation. But they are violent and get ignorant with black people. How can you say that you care about the black people in America calling and scheming at them, calling them out of their names? And in some instances, even now, you have uh, the Hebrew Israelite uh, men running around in their neighborhood terrorizing black people. In fact, some have killed black people. This is a fact. How are you going to care about black people and tell them about their salvation and you're murdering them? There's nothing nice about you. I don't know who these Hebrew Israelites are. And let me tell you something, Hebrew Israelite. Jews never don't have a history more than 900 years. The Hebrew don't have a history longer than 900 years. There were no Jews in Hebrew during the time of the Jesus of the Bible. There was no Hebrews during the time of Moses. That history only lasts 900 years. You don't want to hear that. Your information is wrong because your historical reference is the Bible. And the Bible was used to enslave our people and bring them into America. You're taking the same Bible trying to attempt to justify what you're talking about. It's the same book that caused the problem. How are you going to use the Bible to uplift and awaken the masses of the people when it was the, the Bible was the same tool used by the oppressor to put them to sleep? And so now, here you are, calling women out of their names, having no respect for the mother of the nation with your nasty, ragged ass on the street corners. You can't answer no questions. So all that you can do is trust people out, like you done me, because you're a chump. Then you can kill black people, but you made no attempt to harm this or whatever you want to call the white man, or the government of America that has done the dirty deed. You ain't done nothing to them, but you go around Telling black folks and touching them out. See, you are like, who the hell, you know, who do you think you impress? You ain't impress me, man. And if you represent God, I damn sure don't want nothing to do with it. And I would suggest all black people to stay the hell away from you because if you represent God, I don't want to have 
You shouldn't want nothing to do with nothing like that. A bunch of murderers and disrespectful, ignorant ass people. And you think that's good on the streets trying to scream at somebody and you look silly dressing up like ancient people you never met. They never even, never existed. You should be ashamed to be so ignorant, yet still you think that you got all this knowledge. Talking about the white man and you uplift the Bible. What, the white man, who wrote it then? You show me the black man that wrote the Bible. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and this is the Reality's Temple on Earth. I just want to say, and this, this might be a very sensitive video, it should not be, but it must be said, because there is an illusion that some certain individuals or perhaps a race of people are better than others. The subject of this video is Jewish rabbis arrested in New Jersey. This makes me say, um, it well, makes me go, hmm, in the 1990s, Arsenio Hall used to say on his show, things that make me go, hmm. Now, whenever you speak of Jewish people, and it is in, an, in a negative manner, many people are always call anti-Semitic. But now we have a situation where not one, not two, perhaps up to four Jewish rabbis are arrested in New Jersey for laundering money in the sale of human organ. What the hell? Now, according to some, Jewish people are the chosen people of God. So here we are, and we have the chosen people of God involved in criminal activity. This is what I want to say before my time runs out. We need to stop tripping off of race. We have individuals. No matter what you do, this is a human problem. We have a problem with obeying law that is beneficial to us and our survival as human beings. And the reason why we have a problem with that is because many of us are not even, we're not human. We are called there, but we don't act nowhere near human. Here you are, the chosen people of God, Jewish people. Again, Jew is a race. It's not a race. It is not a race. A Jew belongs to those who believe in the Torah or Judaism. There is no such people in the history of man. There is no such people as Jews. You can call me anti-Semitic, maybe Semitic, or however you want to call it. There is no such thing. Even so, you have been charged with criminal activity. And you don't hear a lot of folks say that. Now, if it's black people, they say, look, they're going to black. They stole this. They killed this person. But here you are. These are the spiritual leaders of Judaism. These are the rabbis. This is not the followers. These are not the people who come to the synagogue uh, each and every uh, once a week or however they, they do their worship. These are the spiritual leaders. Now, if the spiritual leaders, not one, not two, perhaps up to four, if they get, are involved in criminal activity, what does that tell you? That tells me it's not a Jewish problem, it's a human problem. If you are the chosen people of God, then why are you taking or participating in criminal activity? Even the state of Israel itself, 
was not created by God. It was created by those who uh, used the sympathy of what is called the Holocaust in order to uh, be justified in kicking people off land that was already there. There were already people in this uh, land that they now call Israel. In 1948, it was America and British forces that uh, pushed the Palestinians off of their land and then using the Holocaust as an excuse, Zionists or those who were advocating a separate homeland for those who believe in Judaism. And that's another thing, too. Why is a religion given special privileges that a religion needs a country? Are there Christian countries or Islamic countries like that? But again, here we are. And you can call me anti-Semitic or whatever you wish. Then you need to call CNN, CNBC, and all these other news places that's reporting that Jewish rabbis have been charged with a crime in New Jersey. In fact, many Jews, the chosen people of God, aren't there prisons in, in Israel? Don't Jewish people murder? Don't Jewish people steal? But now, but here we are, you always want to, Jewish people, always want to be seen as some kind of angels? There are no angels in the human family. We all got problems. When the scriptures talk about the destruction, there's not going to be no chosen people of God. And if you are the chosen people of God, you are a bad example for who the chosen people of God is supposed to be. You are a bad representation of the Creator. That's why I wanted to sing and bring to our attention in this video. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth. What brings me to this video is that I was speaking with a I guess you could I could describe him as a racist Caucasian person. And the subject was black separation from this nation. Matter of fact, I believe the comment appeared on the video of which I made talking about the arrest of Brother Lewis Gates, the professor in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. In the video, I suggest that we can avoid all of these things if black people just separate from this primarily racist country. And in the comments of the video, this particular person, I could see him in the background applauding, and he supported my suggestion that black people should indeed pack up their bags and go back to Africa America will be a much, much better place. He was so happy until I made the following comment. And I'm sure that many racist Caucasians and even some Uncle Tom Negroes will be happy that some of us who complain about the good old USA would pack our bags up and leave and go back to Africa. Well, first of all, I don't know anything about Africa. The United States of America is all that I know. I have no connection to Africa. To go, to, so, to go back to Africa is just words. 
it is far from a reality. Unless, of course, you're going to use your military and use force to kick a certain of us that complain about our treatment in this country out. Then that's a different story. But until then, I told this person, I am very happy that you agree with me in that the real solution to the problems of the so-called black man in America is separation. I also told him this, of which he had no reply. I said, we should leave America, like you said, sir, and we should go back to Africa, perhaps, or any country that was nice enough to treat us equally, giving us freedom, justice, and equality. Then once we establish in that nation, and when, and when we become strong, then we should build a mighty army and come back to America and defeat the racist Caucasians that are here. We will give the country back to the native people and be friends with the native people and kick the Caucasian races out of America which once belonged to the native peoples. And since your ass, since we were forced to go back to Africa, then we're going to send your ass back to Europe. And once you believe and establish yourself back in Europe, then we're going to come again and kick you out of Europe because you're not even native in Europe. The Native Americans are people who are native to this land. Sending us back to Africa, even though we're not native because we have been tainted and we have been raised by this racist society, but our genes tell us and suggest that we are native to Africa. So for us to go back to Africa will be correct as we are native. We are a native life form upon that land. But you are not native anywhere. Native meaning being natural to that environment, being natural to that land mass. You are not native in North America. You are not native in Asia. You are not native in Africa. Not even in Europe. You have close ties to Europe, but you're not even native there. So where do you belong? Racist Caucasian person, since you want to send people. I would suggest, since you're so interested in the moon, that you hop the latest space shuttle and take your ass there. And you will be native there. Because believe me, I don't want nothing to do with living on the moon. Nor do anybody with any common sense. As the moon is not designed to support our life forms. So you can take your happy ass there. He didn't like my response. Because he wants black people to leave here and forget what this nation done to them. That is the fear among your leaders. See, people like you, sir, are small minded. The leadership, the scientists of the United States of America and Europeans understand this concept. They are afraid if black people come together and separate from whites, they will uh, 
unite forces and bring upon them the terrorism and the hell that they placed upon all the dark people the Asians, the Native Americans, you have given them all hell. In fact, you have given, uh, since the, uh, the racist Caucasian European peoples have come into power, you have given everything, all life, even microorganisms, hell on this planet. The animals cannot live peacefully. You shoot them for fun and you put them in zoos. And you walk them on leashes. And you play with life. Like it's nothing. You take this planet and you rape it for all the oil. Every diamond. Anything that you can find that you believe is of value. One of the worst mistakes you can make. Is to talk about sending black folks to Africa. Because sending black folks to Africa might be. The beginning of your end. Because then the black man. Without your wicked influence. Can begin to think for himself. And realize. Whom the real troublemaker has been. All the time. This is what. Smart. White folks. Is scared of that blacks will leave this country and join alliances with one of their enemies and come back and do to them what was once done. So that's not a very good thought. That racist Caucasian person had no reply and been silent ever since. You don't like that idea of your country being destroyed and taken over, but you had no problem with becoming rich of black slavery and blood. Then you want to send folks back to Africa and don't want to pay for it either. You want it all, don't you? That ain't how it go. This is your brother, Talik Evening Ra. Just wanted to slide that by you. And I want, to, I want to suggest to us to keep banging, like Brother Sarah Sutinsetti said, keep banging on the base. And peace. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And this is the Realities Temple on Earth. I was getting ready to shut uh, this video making thing down for a while and uh, actually it's sort of getting boring to me and I'm going to have to take another break. It's, it's boring. Uh, really, it's, it's very... Uh, watching videos all day long and whatever, it's become boring. Uh, there's nothing challenging to the mind. At first when I first began watching videos on YouTube, uh, certain videos, certain individuals were uh, attractive to me and it helped feed my mind. If a video, if information does not feed my mind, it becomes too childish, infantile. That's, one, that's my favorite word, infantile, because it's exactly immaturity. Uh, the majority of people here on YouTube are between 16 and their early 30s. They have no life experience. They really don't read and research anything. It's all emotion. You can hear the emotions in their voice. So, with that said, I was just about to shut it down. And I got this video response, I believe, from uh, Big Boss Calvin. I think that's what his name used to be. Big Boss Calvin. I believe it's the same person. Uh, big Boss, uh, his video response to a video I made, true, uh, the true uh, forced loneliness murders. Now, since that time, uh, one of the lead persons, I believe, Dwayne Holloway, has sent me emails 
and some other persons who um, also are followers or they uh, advocate, they belong to the True Force Loneliness Movement. They sent me very hateful sounding, angry emails. Let me say this. You can have all the anger that you want. You can cuss. You can rant and you can rave. You cannot make nobody like you. You cannot make no woman date you. You can holler and hoop and do whatever you want to. There are people, and you're not the first ones, who never had a girlfriend, who never had a boyfriend. You're not the first. You won't be the last. I want to say this to you. I've never hollered at you. I don't use profane words toward you. I have an opinion. You always quote about the United States Constitution where we have freedom of speech. So I'm exercising my right of freedom of speech. But of course on YouTube, you know, that's something that's just words because you can be flagged. My original account was flagged because they didn't like my words. Videos hurt them. So I have an alternate account on YouTube and I also have alternate accounts on Tube Watching. So if you don't find me somewhere in the YouTube universe, you can't find me on Tube Watching. So get the flagging, bastards. Flagging because you kiddish. And that's what makes this whole thing boring to me. It is also boring for you to come to me and say that you understand murder, Dwayne. You can understand why this man went out and killed three innocent women. Even if he knew them, you can understand murder. Because I'm lonely, I'm going to go out and kill somebody. What if everybody did that? And you can understand it. Big Boss, you tried to explain this thing to me. You did a very poor job. And I'd like to respond by saying this to you. Accept responsibility for yourself. Stop being excuse makers and blaming everybody. It's the government. It's the women. It's Look at yourself first. I was locked up for 10 years in a state mental institution. Or any prison. Let's just take any prison for example. Here are men who have been denied the right to be with women. But in a jail, in a prison, in a mental facility, these men have girlfriends, they have wives, they get married in jails and prisons and mental institutions. You want me and you expect the public to accept this true force loneliness ideology. You, and that's another thing. You can believe anything that you want. Some people believe in Snoopy. Some people believe in watermelon rise is God. You can believe anything that you want to. More power to you. That's on you. That's on you. These men that's locked up behind bars. But they have girlfriends and wives. Even get married behind bars. And here you are. You want to bring this crap and blame everybody except yourself. At the same time, there are people who are mentally retarded. Get married. Have families. There are blind people. There are people with all kinds of handicaps. Don't have no legs. But they marry. They blind, but they marry with relationship. But the government is against you. The women. I'm not going to involve myself in these petty or oh, the women this and the men. The man garbage. Stop being ex you're ex making excuses for yourself. I. Don't have a mate. I choose to be 
by myself because I like it like that. After being in the mental institution, I like being by myself. It could change in any moment. And when I decide I want to meet somebody and do, I'll do something about it. Yeah, of course. You have to make yourself the best way that you can in order to attract a mate. You don't want to do that. You think some woman is just supposed to lie down with you because I'm lonely. I'm a man. Look. How? Corning. That's garbage. Well, I got money. I got a nice car. Why these women don't like me? Because they don't like you. You cannot force nobody to like you. Just like I'm not going to force nobody to watch these videos. You can watch this video. You can and you, if you don't want you don't have to. It's no skin on my nose. I don't care. I'm not looking for thousands and thousands of videos. Who cares? Doesn't make any difference. But at the same time, just because you don't like what I say, I don't go around cussing people out. You don't like what I said. You a fool. You need therapy. Childish. So I'm not going to involve myself. And this is the last time I'm going to address. Because unless you because you must show me if you want my attention, you show me how the hell can people locked up have relationships and here you are free men and women with j good jobs and whatever. You can't have nobody. You got to blame the world. But here these people are. And I was locked up. We had relationships with people. Something is wrong. You're an excuse maker. Stop making excuses. And if you want somebody to listen to your point of view. Hollering and screaming. Cussing people out. Talk about they deserve to be in a mental institution. Or they need therapy. Or all this other foolishness. How are you going to get your message across? Judge Judy said, if it don't make sense, chances are it's not true. What is being said to us or offered to the public as true force loneliness sounds like a bunch of excuse making. Doesn't make sense. So if it doesn't make sense, chances are it's not true. And if it is true, then stop hollering at people. Stop screaming at them. Being pissed off because they're angry. You don't believe what I say. I can believe. Well, you believe that. And go on and keep doing what you got to do. And uh, I guess you'll be planning on your next murder, right? Because y'all understand murder. You understand death and killing. Because I'm lonely. This is your brother Talik. Even Ra. And uh, I got to go and leave you. Lonely. Sorry. That's how it is. That's the way it is with, you know, just like me. I'm lonely. So what? Peace. From the lonely guy. Alrighty then. <clears throat> Let me get a little comfortable. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition. <laughs> it seems that there's a whole lot of edition. Uh, and the reason for that is because you never know what's around the corner and you and tomorrow is not promised. So if it is possible, go ahead and do what you can do today. So that's why I do the videos I do because there's no guarantee that I'll be here tomorrow to tell you what I was thinking of today. Again, welcome to the Realities Temple on Earth, and I am your host, Brother Talik Ibn Ra. This message goes out to uh, those people who may be described as Caucasians or white people. Now, those 
uh, Caucasians or white people that subscribe to my channel, of course you know this message is not for you because we've been around a while. Some of you have personally emailed me, so you know where I stand on this issue. So, But if you want to listen, and if you are uh, a descendant of a slave, call yourself black or African American, or whatever you may be, I mean, you can also listen to this video too. Plus, I don't, do I have a choice? <laughs> I want to say to these Caucasians that here, now I talk a rough on my video. There's no doubt about that. But I talk rough because those of whom I am speaking with are rough. They are evil and they are wicked. They have that type of mentality or they have done these things. So you don't take marshmallows when you're trying to hunt a lion. You have to bring some type of force. You have to show that lion that you mean business. Now, unlike some black people, they were asked the question very quickly, we're good white people. I don't know enough. Ain't no such thing as a good white person. See, now here is where I differ in that here on the Realities Temple on Earth, I will treat you with justice and being fair. I don't put all white people in the same category. Unlike some white people put all blacks or those of us who are descendants of slaves in the same category. We're drug dealers. I don't do drugs and I don't deal them. They say that we run around and we don't, I'm not on welfare. We don't, I don't have out of wedlock babies. But when they speak, they speak of all. So when I speak about Caucasian people, I'm speaking about a particular person. I'm using adjectives to describe a certain Caucasian person. And if that is not describing you, why are you getting so upset? The good white people? I'm going to be just and fair. Unlike some people. I'm not going to blame you for something that you did not do or had nothing to do with. So don't call me no racism. Don't be calling me. Because if you do, that's very silly. As a fair and just person, I don't want to see a Caucasian man or woman on the street homeless begging for nickels and dimes. I don't want to see you starving. I want you to live the happiest life that you can be. Unfortunately, we cannot uh, change the past or fix the past, but what we, what we can do in our lifetimes is accept what has happened and try to Heal that injury in the best and honest way that we can. And we cannot do that by being politically correct. Because politically correct always seem as though black people get the short end of the stick. If you are a Caucasian person and you claim righteousness and you are good, why do you get upset because I talk about your forefathers who were racist and they weren't good? And this you will agree. This nation ran by your forefathers legalized slavery for 300 years. And the good white people that you say had no effect on this for 300 years. Or are you like your fathers? Do you like your position? You like being on top. You like this slave-master relationship. As long as black people don't want nothing, you smile in their face. And of course, you stab us in the back. That's not what this is about. You should be about solving the problems of humanity and, and bringing all people together. And you don't mind saying that, America. As long as y'all run it, you're left to run things. 
But you don't run things in the ground. You have done things to cause hatred. You have done things to cause murder and chaos and anarchy. You do these things and then put your hand behind your back like you didn't do nothing like you angels. Well, I'm not going to talk to you like no angel because you're not. Why, if you are a good white person or a righteous white person, why do you want to come here and defend evil people? I'm not talking about Caucasian people that had nothing to do with slavery. But there are those who are the descendants of those and they still benefit from the richness of slavery. They still benefit. They have done nothing to help the descendants of slaves. This nation didn't even give us the 40 acres of a mule. They didn't do nothing for us. Why should we, the descendants of slaves, suffer like we do when this nation made trillions of dollars from us? And you talk about the little welfare a few black women get. And you give billions and billions of dollars of welfare to General Motors, to Chrysler, to the Bank of America. You can give them billions of dollars. But you don't want to give and help the descendants of slaves who've been catching hell in this nation for over 300 years and you want to call yourself good. Good for nothing. You're not fair. You're not just. You just want to run things. And you got a lot of black people that's silly and scared of you. Because they think you're the stuff. You don't have no respect for them. It was a white woman that helped me to uh, learn the law. She risked her job bringing me law books when I was locked up. Don't bring that crap to me. Talk about I'm a racist. Why would I call this white woman, this beautiful Caucasian lady? And I'm going to say that because if what she done was a beautiful thing. She didn't have to do a damn thing for me. I got promises from uh, a black woman that's supposed to have law books. She never brought me no law book. Just run her mouth. But this white woman did do that. Why would I hate her when she helped me? I remember going to Chicago. My car did a 360 and I flipped in a ditch. I know on that interstate it had to be a lot of black people but as soon as I went down in that ditch all kinds of cars stopped and they were all white people that got me out the ditch and, and wanted to see if I was all right I, so I don't want to hear that hatred, hating prejudice bull crap because when it's all said and done before a black person might help you some white person will do good to you so and if you Pass up that good nature. Remember, you fall into this same crap that they pull on us. Oh, the better people this and the better people that. You fall in and say, now, now it's the uh, the white folks this and the white folks that. And they do this and that and that and that. Do you miss out on the good nature of people? We were all tricked by white supremacy. White people were victims of white supremacy. White supremacy was created and this hatred was created so they can make money on slavery. That's what it was all about. Anything in America is about money. So they trained white people to hate black so they could do their, uh, do their thing on making money and profit off free slave labor. It ain't about hate. But y'all fall for the trick. And if you're a good white person or a good white man, then stop getting on my case and defending the evil that some Caucasian people have done. Because I don't defend the evil that blacks do. Understand? You got it? Peace. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And this is the Realities Temple on Earth. Um, please excuse 
the lighting of this video because it is still uh, bad weather here in this area, stormy, lightning and rain.